about that time thank you so much for downloading today's episode of the red pill investor my name is carl krenzel your host here today here to help you with your real estate problem thank you so much for tuning in to this episode today uh it is a a unique experience i think we must admit you know if you're a realtor or a real estate investor and you're tuning in to this podcast you know it's been a very long time since we've talked. I mean, since I've made a podcast, it's been quite some time. You know, and the reason for that is because there's been an awful lot going on in the world. I know that you and your life, things have been kind of turned upside down when it comes to coronavirus. And today, what I'd like to talk with you about is selling real estate after coronavirus. You know, believe it or not, there will come a time when we're not going to have to deal with the virus as we know it. You know, certainly, we're going to have to deal with the repercussions of all the money printing and all of the uh, crazy monetary policy that's been going on. But for now, we're going to have to decide what we're going to do when it comes to selling real estate after coronavirus. Because, you know, you're going to have clients, you're going to have customers, you're going to have people who are going to want to buy and sell. And you're probably, like me, wondering what kind of advice, what kind of tactics can you give them? You know, and it's really difficult, I think, and I, and I feel sorry for you, honestly. Many times, if you've got less than five or 10 years in the business, uh, you know, as many of you do, you know, I feel sorry for you because you've never experienced a time where there's been a bad real estate market. No, you've never experienced a time where there's been higher interest rates, where there's been diminished home demand, you know, when there's been foreclosures and short sales. Oh, certainly, you know, you might have one or two old salts around who remember 2008, but that was 12 years ago. And and, and as you know, filing, finding somebody in real estate who's been around longer than five years, well, gosh, that's like finding a needle in a haystack. And more often than not, your broker managers, the people you report to in your brokerages, well, gosh, many times they don't even have the practical experience when it comes to selling in a contaminated environment like this. So today what I'd like to do is I'd like to give you some practical tips on selling real estate after coronavirus. Now, this advice is for you who are realtors. This advice is for you who are investors. This is advice for anybody who has a real estate interest or or is responsible for property or selling property. This is tips that you need to be aware of because I feel I have some pretty good experience to contribute to this. And it's been on my heart to share with you some free tips, free advice, things that you can do that are practical that will help you. Now, in advance, I'd like to share with you Uh, If you've been following the podcast for any period of time, you know that I write books from time to time and I sell them online. Uh, But today, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Today, I'm going to actually just go ahead and give. uh, This is a podcast. You can go ahead and uh, click the link below. Uh, You'll see a free bit.ly link that you can go ahead and get uh, a a free book that I wrote. Uh, Personally, I didn't have any ghostwriters or anything like that. It's me personally writing it. So, you know, obviously it's not, you know, I'm not William Shakespeare here, Uh, but it was called Real Estate Investing for Realtors. You know, and I've had an awful lot of people email me and talk to me and, you know, thank me for the podcast. And I really appreciate all of the, the, the messages that you people send me and it makes me feel really good. And I'm really wanting to give back to you because I remember a time not so long ago uh, when I was like you and I, I was sitting there looking at the market collapsing all around me and thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And like you, I turned to my, you know, my peers and my brokers and very few of them had any real practical experience in dealing with a market like this. And the ones that did, well, it wasn't easy to get information out of them. Let's just put it that way. 
So today I'd like to share with you some practical tips along with a book that has, I don't know, 80, 90 pages. I don't even know how many pages it's got. It's all, all the things I know about selling real estate in an investment capacity. Now, clearly it's not all encompassing and it primarily focuses on wholesaling, assignment of contract, things of that nature when you're a real estate agent. Uh, but there are some practical tips about marketing and follow up and contact and scripts and all sorts of things that you could use in a practical level that I'm going to give to you as my gift to you, my thanks, and, and honestly, my gift back to the community that's given me so much. So let's go ahead and get started today with selling real estate after coronavirus. Now, the reason why it's been a little bit longer for me to go ahead and reply to you or, or talk to you or make a podcast, if you will, is because I've been pretty busy myself. You know, in November of 2019, right before the coronavirus, you know, if you've been following me at any period of time, you know that I have uh, my, 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 my website, carlbuyshouses.com. Uh, that's my website where I generate leads and so on and so forth. And I also started my own company officially. I, I've been a real estate agent for many, many years, 24 years to be honest. Uh, and as you can see from episode one of the Red Pill Investor podcast, I used to do this podcast under a pseudonym uh, because some of the various companies that I had been with uh, many times would give me problems or trouble uh, when it came to uh, doing investing the way I like to. And eventually it worked out to where it was just it was just a lot simpler for me to start my own company as a broker and work for myself. So the Red Pill Investor podcast, uh, you can think now, uh, is is my contribution back to the real estate industry. Now that I own my own company and I am responsible only to myself, I don't have to worry about brokers breathing down my neck about what I say. So you can worry not about that. And I certainly won't. Uh, there is certainly my new company that I've been involved with. And then, of course, there's my new podcast I've been, been involved with. You know, the Red Pill Investor podcast has been very, very uh, helpful for me in, in kind of getting the word out about what I think about the market and what you can do practically to help yourself. Uh, but more, more importantly, I started this podcast, this other podcast called Carl Buys Houses. You know, you can Spotify it or Google it or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, but on that podcast, it's just simply Carl Buys Houses, K-A-R-L Buys Houses. Um, on that podcast, I talk a lot about uh, my market reactions, what I think about the market, how things are moving, and it's more practical advice for people who are buying and selling real estate. Now, I started that podcast to inform people in my market, as well as nationally, about what I feel about the market is going on. Now, I tell you about sales skills. I tell you how to respond, you know, and what to do to help your clients and customers and how to make good decisions. But in Carl Buys Houses, I tell the world what I think about the economy and the market and what they can do to prepare themselves for what I feel is about to happen. Because I also feel in addition to a new company and a new podcast, there's now a new economy that we are dealing with. Now, truthfully, folks, I'd like to say that we are growing, you know, that, that we're in a capitalist country, but we're not. You know, the, the, the notion that we're in a capitalist country is, 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 is gone. It, it's not a capitalist country anymore. We'd like to think that it is, and I certainly grew up in one, and perhaps you did too. But as you can see, the federal government doing quantitative easing, buying up all the bonds, I mean, buying up everything, <laughs> I mean, they're becoming really the largest shareholder in many large companies. And because of this new economy that we have, that's federalized, that's stopped foreclosures, that's stopped evictions, that's caused wreaks havoc in the housing market, well, then there's new rules. You know, and, 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 and what I wish I would, I want to share with you today is the kind of advice I wish I got back in 2008 and, and 19, 1996 when I started. And so today I'm going to give you three pieces of advice and a free book, as I said, realtors and investors too. This, this advice applies to everybody. And I'm just going to give you this advice because as I said, I have 24 years in the real estate business. And I've sold hundreds of homes. I've worked with you know, tons of clients. I've worked for banks. I, I sell primarily their foreclosed properties. And so I have a lot of background when it comes to the real estate game and what you can expect from this. 
So what I'd like to share with you really are just three tips. And if you got a piece of paper, go ahead and pull it out. It'll be three simple, easy ones that you can remember. And then I'll share with you the book link. And then I'm going to ask for you to go ahead and share this podcast with somebody else. That's all I'm going to ask. You know, like, rate, subscribe, do whatever you'd like, but share this with somebody else you feel would use this information or could use this information. Because as you know, the storm that's about to come is going to be utterly biblical. So first, let's talk about what you can do to go ahead and survive and sell real estate after coronavirus, right? Because remember, the coronavirus is going to pass and things are not going to get back to normal. I, I know you'd like to think that they're going to get back to normal, but they're not going to get back to normal. The reason why I say this is you have, you know, 30, 40 million people who are unemployed. It took 10, you know, 10, 10 years to get those jobs. And you're not going to be able to get those jobs back in a, in a wink. I mean, the economy that we had before was built on debt, massive amounts of debt. And this debt now is going to come due. People are going to have to start paying that. You can't kick the can down the road any further, much further than that. So what do you do? How do you advise your customers? How do you advise your clients? If you're an investor, what do you look for? Well, point number one, you look for motivation. Motivation becomes the key factor even more than it was back then. Now, remember, in a good economy, you're looking for motivation. You know, you're asking the seller about their motivation. What happens if it doesn't sell? Where are you going to go? Things like that. But, you know, if, if, if the economy is you know pretty good and things are roaring along and the interest rates are super low, well, if your home is a little bit overpriced, we've all been in that situation where somebody's bought the home anyway. I mean, I've been shocked dozens of times to see that people will pay what they'll pay. And perhaps you have too. So understand that in a good economy, sometimes motivation is not that important or is not as important. But when the economy turns, interest rates get higher, there's fewer buyers out in the market because they're afraid of buying or they've lost their jobs or there's a lot of unemployment. Well then, when the market changes like that, motivation becomes critically important. Remember, a critical test to understand whether or not this person is a good client or customer for you is based on their motivation. Ask yourself this question. How bad do they want it? I mean, a good rule of thumb is they can't want it more than you do. I mean, you can't want it more than they do, right? If, if you want this deal so bad and, and they're like, well, who cares? You know, that's a recipe for disaster. You're going to find yourself overpaying that prop for that property if you're an investor or listing that property for too high if you're a realtor. You can't want something more than the seller does. And if the seller is ambivalent about their price, you know, if they want 2019 prices, okay, for a home and it's 200, you know, 2020, 2021, and the market's starting to turn, that's not necessarily possible. You need to be able to screen your prop, your prospects very, very hard, right? Make sure you qualify them. Understand exactly why they're selling their property before you even go out there or before you talk to them. I mean, well, I mean, obviously you need to talk to them, but before you get into, into any kind of presentation or any kind of discussion about price or offers or terms, you know, it's a really solid piece of information for you to go ahead and to pre-qualify them and understand fundamentally why they're selling and, and what happens if they don't sell. That's such a critical question. You know, if you ask them, hey, what happens if your home doesn't sell? And, ah, you know, it doesn't really matter to me one way or the other. Well, then you've got a problem. If they say, well, gosh, you know, I have to sell this home. I have to sell it right away. There's no, there, there's no options. I mean, we were going to get foreclosed or whatever. Well, you can clearly see that that is a much better prospect to deal with. And the key in a bad economy is to manage your time. You can't go around wasting your time with useless prospects who aren't going to do or sell or buy anything. You have to qualify your, qualify your clients so you can use your time properly. And, and for crying out loud, don't be afraid to say no. Don't be afraid to say no. 
And I know that's so hard. You know, when you're transferring or, or in, a, in, a, in, a, in a an economy that is switching around from a good market to a bad market, you know, in a good market, you were fighting for deals, you were competing with people and you were thinking, oh gosh, you know, we're gonna have to pay too much or whatever. Well, in a downturn, in, a mar in an economic downturn, the situations are reversed. There's fewer buyers and a lot more sellers. So don't be afraid to say no, because a no today many times will result in a better sale later or a better price for you as a buyer later. If you're an investor, how many times has this happened? Where a buyer has said, well, we're gonna take somebody else's offer. They take that other offer. You tell them, well, gosh, you know, call me if that falls apart. And what do you know? It falls apart and then they call you. Now, when you make that offer on them again, on that property again, are you gonna pay that same price as you were before? No, of course not. <laughs> I mean, that'd be dumb, why would you? And likewise, if you're a realtor, don't be afraid to say no. If they want to list the property way too high and they say, well, if you don't list it, I'll list it with somebody else. Say, great, smile, wish them well, shake their hand and walk out the door. I know that's so hard because you have commissions riding on it. You have money riding on it. And it, it there's a car payment and a house payment, all these things that need to be paid. You got kids. I mean, I get it. But you have to think about your time. At what price will an overpriced listing sell? None. Now true, you can beat them up on the price month after month after month and pray that they'll go ahead and reduce that price. But more often than not, they, they don't listen to you. They ignore what you say. It eventually expires and then somebody like me comes along, tells them the same thing you told them, and, and then they listen to me because it's hearing from somebody else. And, and, and then they sign it and then they sell it and I get the commission and you don't. Look, don't be afraid to say no. When people are, 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 are as firmly convinced of the price as you are, well, then they'll respond to that. But sellers can understand if, if you're desperate or if you're hungry, they can smell it. Don't let that smell come off you. Point number two. The second thing I would give you a piece of advice on or, or what I would tell myself back then in 2008, right? Price aggressively. Price aggressively. Now, look, let's just be honest. I mean, since we're all friends here, we can admit that the real estate market is inflated. Can't we? I mean, after years and years and years of quantitative easing, and unlimited, I'm sorry, uh, uh, the, 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 the interest rates being at zero or near zero for years on end, 10 years, and now you have unlimited quantitative easing in the future, well, you can clearly see how prices are getting out of control. Now, what this means when I say price aggressively, in a market that's changing, when the market, when the balloon, the bubble, the, the bubble that we were experiencing in 2008 and, and then again in here in 2019 and 20, you know, the bubble that we're experiencing there was fueled by quantitative easing and low interest rates. In, a, in, in, in that so-called good market, okay, it didn't really matter what you priced it at because somebody else could come along and pay a little bit more for the house it's no big deal it's just the interest rates are a little bit lower who cares right but what happens when the interest rates have to go up and they have to go up to control inflation you see the the bad the bad news about printing money you see is is that it robs you of your purchasing power in the future that's the difficult truth about what the federal government is doing right now they're printing money and they're not physically printing it, obviously. They're digitally printing it, you know, but the, 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 the end result is the same. The mere fact that they're printing money or digitizing money, so to speak, creates inflation, meaning that there's more dollars out there than there are goods and services that are being provided. In COVID-19, everybody's laying around getting, you know, checks and whatnot from the federal government, and very few people are working. Now, when you don't have that many people producing items and you have a whole lot of people who have extra cash, well, then the items go away because of scarcity and the prices go up 
because of the abundance of cash. This is what's going on in the housing market. But this causes inflation. And that, I mean, this is inflation. And, and, and this, this, this inflation can quickly become out of control and get too high. And to create a stop, if you will, to stop inflation, to control it, many times the central bank will, the federal, the federal government, the Fed, will go ahead and, and create a higher interest rate. But when they create higher interest rates, when they raise the interest rates, well, then that devastates the housing market, the credit market, the, the economy at large. There's fewer transactions being done. And because there's fewer transactions being done, the prices go down. Now, the problem is nobody in your office is telling you this. Your broker's not telling it. You're, nobody else is explaining to you why this is happening and how this is playing out. And what more importantly you can do to help your clients advise your clients to get through this. Because if you're a realtor out there, you've, 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 you've set yourself in a fiduciary capacity with people that you're going to protect them. Now, you certainly don't have to be an economist to understand everything that's going on. You certainly don't have to go to Wharton to get a business degree, but it does make sense for you to understand the real implications of printing money and how it affects your clients when they're buying or selling their home. And when I say pricing your home aggressively, understand that in an in a, in a, in a old economy that was capitalist, right? you just simply go ahead and price it 5 or 10% below the current comparables. That's what you need to do right now. When the market starts to change like this, you can't price it above like you used to. You have to price it below the market. And this is a difficult thing to tell people when they're sellers. But if you're convinced, as I am, as to the, 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 the the, the, the right idea of this, the, the certainty of this idea, if you're as convinced as I am that this idea is the right path, the right route, as if you're as convinced as I am that this will get them the best, the best money, well, then they will believe it too. When I tell you that the market is changing and you need to price your properties aggressively, okay, price your properties 5 to 10% below the current comparables, okay, first, if you do this, the first advantage to you and your client is you will not have to chase the market. That's the problem. In a declining market, okay, when the market starts to go down, people start to do their price reductions. It's like a puppy chasing a ball. Now, when you throw a ball down a hill, a puppy will chase the ball and he'll flip over his ears and whatnot, trying to get to the ball. He'll chase it all the way. And he'll eventually, he'll catch it all the way at the bottom of the hill. Now, if you do it again, you throw it down the hill. You know, a couple more times, the, the puppy might, you know, trip over his ears or whatever. But eventually, he's going to learn, hey, wait a minute. If I catch it in the middle, I won't have to go all the way to the bottom. A smart dog is going to catch it before it goes too far. And that's what I'm saying to you here is that if you price the property five to 10% below what it should be anyway, well, then you're making it extraordinarily competitive. You're making it very, very attractive to the buyers in the marketplace. And you won't have to chase the prices down because if the market changes and it has to, people are starting to reduce their prices five or 10%, well, guess what? You're already there. And the additional advantage is that if the market hasn't changed and your property is 5 to 10% below the market value, well, you might just get multiple offers. And if the market in your area hasn't changed quite yet and things are doing well, well, then you might want to do this because then you'll be able to get multiple offers, play one against the other and get the best price. The same thing goes for investors, right? Maybe not 5 or 10%, but if you're buying a property and your intent is to wholesale it or assign, it, assign a contract or, or, or maybe even just buy it and flip it. You know, when you buy that property, okay, don't forget to price the property aggressively with the market. And, and, and the other thing I would tell agents is to have a pre-planned price reduction. You know, you want to have that conversation with your seller at the time of the listing. Let them know, hey, look, the market is changing. Okay, don't go in with sunshine and rainbows and telling everybody how things perfect, the market's wonderful, yeah, everybody's blah, blah, blah. Don't tell them that. 
Because when the market changes, you're going to look like a fool. When things turn around and you've got to come back to them and you've got to say, well, gosh, we need to reduce the price. They're going to say, well, wait a minute. Three or four weeks ago, you were saying the market was great. And now you're saying we've got to reduce the price by 5 or 10%. What are you talking about? Are you an idiot? What are you, what are you stupid? No. Instead, tell people the honest truth right from the beginning. Look, guys, the market is changing. And you need to be aware that we may need to change the price. And the best way to be prepared for the price is to go ahead and have this price reduction conversation now. If we don't get, you know, an, if we don't get an offer in 30 days, well, the home's overpriced. And we'll need to reduce the price by 5 or 10%, depending on how many people have seen it. So what I'm going to have you do today is sign a, you know, a price reduction a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, whatever you choose in advance. So they've already signed off saying that they acknowledge that there's going to be a price reduction in a few weeks. Because in a few weeks, if that home hasn't sold and you go back to them and you say, well, gosh, you know, let's have this uh, price reduction again. They're going to say, oh, well, you know, let's just do one or 2,000. That's not going to help you at all. It really won't. Trust me, I've been there. This is advice from a 24-year broker. Okay, I've sold hundreds of homes, represented hundreds of clients, banks, people, families, estates. Trust me, I'm telling you, this is what happens. When it comes to investors... Understand that your money is made on the buy. Okay? It's on the buy. And so you need to anticipate problems. You need to anticipate that there's going to be issues when it comes to that home, and you want to price it accordingly. You know, it's not only the, the condition of the home that you need to be concerned about. It's, it's now, it's what is the market going to be like two, three months from now when you have the home fixed up and ready to sell. Is it still going to have those comparables that you're comparing it to, say, three, four, five, six months ago? My bet? My bet? No, it won't. So you want to price it accordingly. Understand that the market is going to change when you're buying it and when you're making your offer, make that offer accordingly. Point number three, final point, guys. Remember, if this has been any help to you, you know, like, rate, subscribe, share it with a friend, tell an agent. Don't forget the free book that I'm giving you there. There's a couple, I don't know, 80, 90, 100 pages, something like that. All the information I could condense down as best as I could. There's no sales stuff in there for you to buy this or buy that. It was a book I was selling for 25 bucks. Uh, but you know what? It, the the COVID-19 thing is so, so ridiculous that I felt in my heart that agents really needed to have this information as well as investors. So I'm just going to give it to you and uh, hope that you'll share it with somebody as well. All right. Point number three, perhaps the most important point of all. Point number three is you must recognize the importance of mindset. Recognize the importance of mindset. Look, if you're a real estate agent out there, okay, if you're an investor out there and you're looking at the real estate market and you're thinking, holy cow, what's going on? Well, first of all, understand you're not the only one looking at it that way. Okay, but your mindset alone will make or break you in this market you have to avoid the news you just have to and I know it's hard I, I struggle with it daily trust me I'm, I'm preaching to the choir this is as I said advice I wish I would have given myself but for a happy mindset to get your mind right okay you have got to avoid the news because it is I mean it doesn't matter who it is CNN, Fox, whatever. I'm not saying don't be educated about the market. You should be educated about the market, but avoid overly partisan issues. Avoid that kind of news because, look, A, there's nothing you can do about it, and B, it's only going to affect your mindset and make you less productive. If it makes you less productive, how are you going to be helpful to your family? How are you going to help your community? How are you going to help your the people around you, if you're broke, avoid the news. The second part of the importance of a mindset is you have to make yourself an island of peace. And man, I struggle with this. I'm going to be hard. I'm going to be honest with you. This is probably the hardest thing for me. But you have to be an island of peace. Now, I know that it's tough out there right now and unemployment checks and people not getting their money and the planned unemployment and blah 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 i get it it's tough out there bills are not getting paid and you're broke and i understand your dreams are collapsing all around you because you thought things were going to go a certain way 
But guess what? Be an island of peace. Because your clients are feeling the same way. Your, cu your customers, your, 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 your sellers, the people you're looking to buy or sell real estate to or from, they all are going through the very same thing. Everybody's scared. And you can either add to that or you can be an island of peace. Look, I, I, I understand this is where we are. However, this is my plan. I have a plan how we're going to get you out of this situation, Mr. Seller. Or Mr. Buyer, I understand your concern, but this is what we can do. Don't get all outraged and freaked out and, you know, ah, you know, all this. Sort of, no, don't get all that juiced up about stuff. I mean, be an island of peace. So when your customers or clients call you, they know that they can get somebody who's going to be rational, have a plan, and not get their emotions too high or too low, but they keep them between the lines, as my coach Mike Ferry used to say. And finally, when it comes to the importance of mindset, you know, speaking of Mike Ferry, he gave me a really big piece of advice I'm going to give you. Don't be attached to the outcome. Don't be attached to the outcome. I'm going to say it another time just in case you didn't hear it the first couple times. Don't be attached to the outcome. Why not be attached to the outcome? Because first of all, you know, when you get yourself attached to the outcome of what's going to happen to that transaction, you start spending money you don't have. You start thinking about things you don't need to think about. You start, you know, detracting away from your family or your business. You get all wrapped up in one deal and the thing falls apart. Well, guess what? If you put all your eggs in one basket, you're screwed. And there's a whole lot of people right now who are learning what it's like to be, you know, having all their eggs in one basket. You want to reduce your expenses. I understand this is not a popular post. This is not, this is not a, a thing you want to hear. But you need to understand this. Reduce those expenses that you don't need to spend, right? All those days going out to, you know, eat or this or that. I mean, you need to cut that back. Why? So you have more cash. You want to save. That's what I would have told myself in 2008. You need to save. Take the cash that you save. Don't put it in the bank. Buy gold. Buy silver. If you can't buy, sil if you can't buy gold, then buy silver. I mean, I'm not a financial advisor and I can't give you financial advice. But if I was, in, you know, if I was going to give myself some advice that I wish I had in 2008, Take all those commissions, take all the money, all the stuff you made, and instead of going to the Caymans and instead of you know going on cruise ships and instead of gambling it all away or doing what you do, well, buy, buy gold, buy silver. You know, put that someplace safe, right? Because you want to have a protection against wealth. It's not a matter of making your money at this point. Look, guys, the, the economy is such, as I mentioned, it's not the old economy anymore. It's not the old way of things. It's the new way. And the new way of things now is not making wealth. It's preserving wealth. And if you're going to be smart and a realtor and an investor in this situation, guys, I'm telling you right now, you need to be smart. Preserve your wealth. And finally prospect more prospect more look i'm not saying that you need to make thousands of calls or whatever but look understand that the market many times people are looking at the internet nowadays and make posts make videos right instead of raging or commenting about what somebody says to you uh you know or or or, or whatever well, why don't you just take a, a minute to make a post a video post, a podcast, whatever it is about that question, that issue. You know, somebody asks you, hey, what's the market like here in Tulsa, Alabama or whatever, Tuscaloosa, Alabama? Well, you know, you, you, you're an agent in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. You need to make a little quick podcast. You know, hey, the, today's market is blah, 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 right? Or what kind of problems that somebody faces, you know, in Roll Tide Roll? What, what, kind of, what, what kind of problem do they have in Alabama when they're selling a property? Well, you know what to say. Well, guys, you've heard that alarm. It's saying that I've gone ahead and said a little bit too much. I didn't want to preach all day, but as you can see, uh, the best way to go ahead and get over a bad deal is to get another one already signed. Prospect more. Prospect more, guys. Listen, 
I really appreciate all the time. I really appreciate the, the messages that you've been sending me, guys. You guys have been awesome. I really appreciate your patience with me. It's been a very long time since I put out a podcast, but it's taken me some time to start my own company and uh, do the things that I've done. I specialize in REO properties, distressed properties here in Tucson, Arizona. I would highly encourage you uh, to go ahead and just check out my website at carlbyshouses.com. Uh, that'll help in the uh, SEO traffic, and I would appreciate it. And I I would also appreciate it uh, if you check out my podcast, carlbyshouses.com, uh, where I'm telling my clients, my customers, what I think. And I would encourage you to do the very same thing uh, with your market. Start your own podcast. Start telling people your opinion about what's going on because they need to hear the truth. Thank you so much for paying attention. And until next time, oh, don't forget the book, guys. Free book, link below. Share it with a friend. And until next time, have... A powerful sales day. Bye-bye.